Hey guys, Meet Ronald Chris Tomer here on this Thursday. Let's talk some mountain weather, and I want to take you to Colorado because it is a stunning HD high definition type of day. So this is the view from Winter Park. I uh, showed you this yesterday, and you might recall um, all of this ground was covered in snow, and they, they were showing about six inches of new snow there at Winter Park. Maybe a little bit more higher up, but uh, you see some melting going on. But man, what a view here. These blue skies out there, low relative humidity. You've got snow still caked on the high peaks above 12K, 11, 12K out there. So that's Winter Park. Here's Breckenridge, the view from Peak 9 um, over to Peak 8, and, and uh, there's still some snow. Now, keep in mind, Breckenridge is west uh, west of uh, Winter Park, west of the Continental Divide here, and so there wasn't quite as much snow, and most of it was above 11 or 12,000 feet up here on the 10-mile range. Some of it has melted lower, but nice view there from Peak 9 over to uh, Peak 8. Here's the view on Long's Peak 14er here in Colorado, and, I mean, it is still caked. Uh, I think I was guessing 8 to 10 inches. Uh, maybe more in a couple of spots, but uh, that's not going anywhere. Some of the lower elevation snow, like Mount Lady Washington over here, down uh, down the trail, will probably melt off um, in the coming days because we've got some dry weather here for a couple of days, but then it's going to change. Here's the view on radar across the west. I mean, talk about a beautiful day over Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, Utah. The action is down here with rim. It's the same thing. It's this remnant tropical low that is moving at snail's pace and it's kind of moving back and forth back and forth um, over the last three to five days let me take you in closer so you're looking at uh, radar out of san fran um, and you've got the area of low pressure right here everything kind of rotating around and most of it's rain i mean you might have a little bit of snow up here on some of the higher sierra peaks right now but i mean the radar is really showing predominantly rain at this point um, okay, let me uh, just briefly talk about my bullet points here, and then we'll move into the forecast of this. So that tropical, that tropical area, that remnant continues to meander. Um, now, this is really the bottom line for this. The, the biggest thing I can bring to the table in this update is that the end of the month into early October does look more active. I think we'll have one, maybe even two storm systems that hit the West Coast and then throw some of that energy and moisture into the interior. In the Intermountain West, here are your best odds of snow for Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, Montana, and BC. And notice um, the dates extend out. There's a little bit of precip on 926 from that remnant, believe it or not, from that remnant area of tropical low pressure. And that would be the case for Colorado, Utah. Then at the end of the month, you can see some of these dates, 928, 29, 30, into the early days of October. It's much more active. Um, in those uh, in those areas, let me just <clears throat> briefly take you to uh, the water vapor satellite imagery. Now, this is current, and so when you're looking at this, you're looking at uh, moisture in the mid levels of the atmosphere. All of this orange and red stuff, this is all dry air. There's our remnant low, and you can see some of the whites. That's going to be your moisture. You can see some of the whites and blues out here. Um, that's where your action is, and so that's what we're seeing right now. I mean, look at all of this dry air across the Intermountain West. That is really dry, and that's why the weather's so nice in uh, <clears throat> Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, Montana. I mean, it's just high and dry in those in most of those areas. So, you know, we talked a little bit about the water vapor. I want to show you what the forecast uh, water vapor satellite imagery will look like here in the future. So, We'll start this today at about lunchtime. Now, it's the same concept as what I was talking about. So your, so your dry air on this is going to be in these oranges and these reds, these black colors. That's all dry air. Your moisture is in the whites, um, these, these oranges, these yellows, these greens. That's where your moisture is at. That's the higher cloud tops. That's the colder cloud tops. And, and, and really, that's a, that's a signifier as to, hey, that's where the action is. So there's our remnant tropical low pressure. You've got a tropical system down here. You've still got a little bit of moisture from the monsoon hanging out over Mexico. And then you've got, it looks like a frontal boundary here moving across the East Coast. So that's today at lunchtime. Let's move this ahead and see what it looks like. All right, so that's uh, dinner time tonight. Here's early Friday. So that's Friday morning. Here we are, Friday lunch. There's a Friday night. Um, now this is going to be Saturday morning. So let me point out a couple of features. There's our remnant tropical low. Look what it's doing. It's slowly moving towards the four corners. And that's going to throw a little bit of moisture into the four corners. So parts of Colorado, parts of Utah, 
potentially Arizona, New Mexico might get a little bit of moisture out of this. Um, and then what else do we got? So there's some, look at that. Look at that boundary right there. That front, totally dry here. And there's a lot of moisture right along this front. Look at what's happening down in the Caribbean here. You've got something trying to develop right here and then a more organized area uh, over there. So that's that could potentially end up being a very interesting scenario. Let's move this ahead. All right, there's lunchtime Saturday. Uh, here we are, late Saturday. Okay, here's Sunday morning. Uh, here we go on Sunday at lunch. Now, I want to I want to just telestrate something, point this out. This is a developing tropical system. This is a much more well-defined, mature tropical system, potentially tropical storm or hurricane. You can almost see the eye right there. That would be most likely a hurricane if that uh, were the case. Now, the two of these are fairly close in proximity, and they'll probably do a little dance together before one or the other takes uh, control of uh, the other one. Um, you still have all of this remnant tropical moisture. So this is Sunday, the 28th, and, and you still have a little bit of remnant moisture here. So what we're probably going to see is that during the afternoon hours with daytime heating, we'll probably see pop-up areas of rain, snow, or even thunderstorms over some of the Intermountain West with that type of pattern there on Sunday. <clears throat> okay, let's move this ahead. So there's Sunday night, here's Monday morning. Uh, now, this is a really important moment because it looks like if this is a tropical storm that it's making landfall in the Carolinas. So that would be a very interesting thing to watch. And then this would most likely be a hurricane. You can see the eye. So those are very close together. Um, and then look what's happening out here. It looks like we have a trough moving in. That would be the start of our end of the month storm system that hits the West Coast. And that's something to watch. Um, <clears throat> let's move ahead here. All right, so there, there's Monday lunch. Um, there's Tuesday morning right there. There's Tuesday night. So by Tuesday night, um, what's left of that tropical storm is there, and we'll have to watch this tropical system. And then out west, it looks like you've got a big dip in the jet here with some energy and area of low pressure. And this would likely be pushing some snow into the Intermountain West. So this is, uh, this is the very end of the month, almost into the 1st of October. So let's move into October. All right, here we go. There's uh, October 1st, the morning of October 1st. And you can see that wave of moisture right here crossing the Rockies. And then there's a little bit more behind it. So yeah, that's likely going to be a storm system. Uh, here we are. This is early on the 2nd of October. Another one moving into the West Coast. There, there's lunchtime. There's the end of the day on the 2nd of October. And notice another area of low pressure, additional moisture right there. So the wave train starts up across the West. Um, okay, here's early on uh, Friday, the 3rd of October. Here's the 4th, the morning of the 4th of October right here. And look what we've got. You've got, uh, look at this well-defined area of low pressure crossing the Rockies. So that would likely be a snow producer with some colder temperatures. So pretty interesting way to look at the forecast 7, 8, 9, 10 days out from now on water vapor satellite. It's what the satellite should look like. And it really gives you a bird's eye view of where the moisture is going to be. Okay, let me, let's see what else we got loaded up here. Um, let me just show you what the middle of the atmosphere is going to look like. So this is, um, this is today, the 25th, and there's our remnant low. And look at all of this area of low pressure here across the midsection of the country. So it's creating a trough. So whatever energy comes in from the Atlantic or the Caribbean will likely run into this. Um, and, and be picked up by that that area and, and may get drawn into it as well. So that's how uh, that's why some of that tropical energy is going to move in there because look what happens. By Monday the 29th, you've got two areas, and it's what I showed you on that uh, water vapor satellite. You've got uh, your tropical storm here and your hurricane down here. And look, big drop in pressures. That's what you're looking at here. Um, atmospheric pressure anomalies in the middle of the atmosphere on Monday the 29th. That's our big change in the pattern right there. All right, one more. So this is going to be the 5th of October. 5th of October. Remember the 4th, 3rd, 4th? There was an area of low pressure sitting over the Rockies. There it is. You can see the dip right there. So that's a feature that could bring colder weather and some snow back to the Rockies by 3, 4, 5 of uh, October. Um, <clears throat> 
Let's look at the 10 day snow forecast. You can clearly see it. We've got some snow here for the Sierra, end of the month. Uh, with that storm system. You've got snow for all the mountain zones of Colorado and quite a bit indicated up here in Wyoming, potentially because you've got at least two storm systems kind of tracking directly through that area. And then some snow up here for BC and Alberta as well. Let me zoom in, um, see what this looks like. So this is the view of Wyoming, Utah, parts of Utah, and parts of Colorado. I mean, if this actually holds, you're looking at six to 12 inches of snow accumulation over the top maybe a little bit more over the top of the Wind Rivers, the Bighorns, uh, parts of Yellowstone. Even the Tetons indicated that you may have some snow here over the Tetons because the colder air would bring the snow levels down, the freezing levels down. And maybe up to six inches here for the high Uintas and potentially up to six inches for parts of the mountains of Colorado. Speaking of those mountains, let's zoom in on Colorado. And this is where we'll uh, we'll call this good after this. But you can see some of the uh, the pink colors here showing up across some of the mountain zones. Those would be the areas that would be potentially in line for up to six inches of snow accumulation. But pretty much all the zones highlighted here, a little bit less over the northern zones, but central and south, I mean, you can see it potentially up to six inches of snow right there. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.